Hi, I'm Ryan Rodefer. I am a certified arborist and safety coordinator with Wachtell Tree Science. I'm also an adjunct instructor with Gateway Technical College. The purpose of today's video is to go through a basic overview of gear inspection. Uh, this will include your PPE and your basic climbing gear that you should be using out in the field. Uh, this video does not mean by any chance that you are proficient in using any of this equipment or gear, but so you should make sure to also be trained through somebody else that has been deemed proficient. So, here we go. To get started, we're going to look over our required PPE. And to begin, we'll look at the hard hat. With the hard hat, you want to make sure that it's an ANSI rated hard hat and that it's within five years of the manufacturer's date. When you're doing your actual inspection, you want to check it, your shell of the hard hat for any cracks. You want to look at any other plastic components like the on the chin strap and the suspension system. Make sure that that's functioning properly. Flipping it back over, we're looking at the shell again. So we're looking for any discoloration, which will be an indicator of UV damage. We're going to be looking at the interior of this hard hat, which on the cask, it's a, it's a foam interior. So you want to make sure that that's not falling apart or deteriorating. Uh, and after any impact with the foam interior, you need to retire it. The shell, shell retire after any significant impact. The other style of hard hat that we have is a suspension system. This has that wet, the webbing straps in there as a suspension system. It's held together by these plastic components, so you want to make sure that those are not cracked as well. Next, we'll be getting to, into eye protection. First, I'd like to touch on is the mesh visor attachment for a hard hat. And these are awesome to have, but they are not rated for ANSI eye protection. So when you have this, you do need to make sure that you have ANSI rated eye protection below this. And that could include safety glasses, goggles, or a visor. And to be sure that it's ANSI rated, on the inside of your safety glasses or goggles visor, it'll be stamped with a Z87.1. And if there's a plus sign, that just means that it's better. So making sure that that's there, it's either going to be on the frames or the lenses. When inspecting your, your safety glasses, you want to be looking for any cracks on the lenses or the frames. You want to make sure that the lenses are clear of any debris or major scratches. And you want to make sure that they fit properly. With safety glasses, sometimes it can be difficult because you may have prescription glasses. So to take care of that, you can have safety glasses that fit over your prescription glasses, like these nice big clear ones. Or you can purchase safety glasses that, uh, are, that have the prescription with them, so you can order those. And there are a lot of varieties out there, so be sure to look at, look around and get the right pair for you. Some may came, come with uh, side shields, but yeah, you want to make sure you get a nice fitted pair of safety glasses. Going to inspect your hearing protection, when you're looking at your earmuffs, the first thing you're looking for are, are there any cracks? And then make, you want to make sure that your earmuffs are nice and clean. Otherwise, you're not going to get that seal that you need for your earmuff. When you're looking at your earplugs, to inspect your earplugs, ear you want to make sure that those are clean as well. They're not really a long-term use thing. You want to replace them daily or every other day at the very least. Uh, you want to make sure that they're working properly. And if they go through the wash, that doesn't mean that they're clean. You, you need to retire those. Earplugs that go through the wash, they just don't work, work right. So make sure you get nice fitted earplugs. Proper footwear and clothing. When we start talking about boots, we're looking for something with good support and good traction. Now for mine, I have good, some pretty good ankle support. These are some my favorite boots. When we're talking about clothing, you don't want loose fitting clothing that can caught up from branches and debris getting sucked into the chipper. Um, selecting the right pair of gloves is important, especially when you start getting into the warmer pairs of gloves or leather gloves. You want to be sure that they don't have a gauntlet style glove. You shall not have a gauntlet style glove while chipping. And it's very important. Now we'll be moving into life support systems for climbing. I'm going to start talking about the harness, or climbing harness, and this is a tree motion light. It's a pretty common standard climbing harness out there. It's definitely preferred. And what I'm going to first start and look start looking at is the webbing system. This is a webbing webbing-based system 
for life support. And it, it does wrap all the way around, so it does get a little difficult to inspect because you do have to kind of move thick pieces around to make sure you're getting a full view of everything. There are buckles in the way, so you do want to make sure looking, spending some time with that webbing, webbing strap. <clears throat> you're going to be looking for any, any nicks, any abrasions, any discoloration. And that's all the way through. Next, I'll, I'll look at the D-rings. Our D-rings are on the side. They usually sit right on our hips. And on, the, on our D-rings, I'm going to be looking for any, any nicks, burrs, any cracks, and again, uh, any wear points. You'll start seeing some paint worn off and it starts digging into the metal. So keep an eye out for that. And so that we have our upper Ds, and that moves us into our lower Ds. For this particular harness, we have lower D attachments. And again, I'm looking for any burrs, any nicks, any cracks, any discoloration or excessive wear. These lower D-rings, this, this holds the bridge. This is our bridge. It's a, you, you may have a rope attachment, or it could be a webbing attachment bridge. We want to make sure that this is not overly worn, and that means excessive glazing, any, any nicks, puffs, inconsistencies in the rope at all. You want to make sure that the knots are properly set and tied. On your bridge, you may have a friction device. So in this case, we have a swivel. We want to make sure that the swivel doesn't have any excessive wear. You want to make sure, and that's the most important part that I find to look for excessive wear, is down where it rubs against the bridge. It's also really important to look for any, any burrs or any nicks on there because any nicks or burrs will start picking at the rope on your, on your bridge and that's just asking for trouble. So keep an eye out for that. Now the rope, they have, there's a few different constructions out there. There's 16, 24, 32, and 48 strand. I have a 24 strand. That means, in this case, the outer jacket, which is all the threads that you see, and the inner core, they are both load-bearing. So when you're doing your inspection, you're going to be inspecting very thoroughly throughout the entire rope. When I'm looking at the outer jacket, I'm looking for any, any cuts, nicks, any abrasion, any discoloration in the rope. When I'm to, look, to inspect the core, it gets a little more difficult because you, you, need, you can't really see it. And if you see it, obviously you're going to retire that rope immediately. But when you're inspecting the core, you're going to run your hand over it and you're feeling for any inconsistencies, any variations in, in the diameter. And that's going to be a hint that the core is either being puffed up and there's some cuts in there, or if it feels kind of elongated or there's a dip in the rope, it means there's some strands cut in the core. So inspecting your rope thoroughly is very important. And like I said, each, each construction has a little different load-bearing component that you're going to be inspecting. Next we'll be talking about carabiners. <clears throat> With carabiners there's two, two main styles that we'll be using and that's an oval shaped carabiner and a pear shaped carabiner. With both of them it, you're, you're inspecting the same thing. So with, with both your carabiners, with all your carabiners, you're going to be inspecting the gate. And that's, that's this portion here. We have a triple, triple action gate. So that means it takes me three actions to open it. So there's three actions. And to close, it should spring right back in. Uh, if it doesn't, and to inspect that, you want to bring it up nice and slow and see if you can get it to stick. Don't, don't just let it slam close because it's more likely to close. You want to see if you can get it to stick. If it sticks at all, you want to use duck oil to lubricate it. That stuff's not too expensive, so get some and it's, good, it's handy to have around on the truck. Uh, with, with another portion of the carabiner we'll be inspecting, be any nicks or burrs or cracks especially within the around the whole carabiner because you could be using this with what with a prusik cord or a webbing sling, any soft gear kind of stuff. You can those nicks and burrs will really tear apart tear those apart. So keep an eye on, on your carabiners nice and close. Also be looking for any wear. So if you're having this run on rope, there's a good chance you'll start getting some wear points on your carabiner. So Inspect those thoroughly. So our webbing slings are these flat webbing straps. And those, these are often used for life support. Now if you use these for rigging at any point, you can no longer use them for life support. 
So it's a good idea to have different colors or uh, specifically deem some of your wedding slings for climbing only. When inspecting a wedding sling, you want to take it apart or open it up all the way, run your hand over it. You're looking for any of those those nicks, any any pulls, any any cut strands that could have been caused from just rubbing through the tree or even a, a burr on a carabiner. Now with pulleys, we're going to be inspecting, looking for any of the, the nicks, burrs, excessive wear on the plates especially because if you're side loaded on it, you may be wearing down the plates. You want to make sure that that has, the, has good movement within the pulley and the, and the plates itself. And with any hardware that you use, that goes for carabiners, pulleys, anything like that, it needs to be rated at 22.24 kilonewtons, which is 5,000 pounds. And on that point, with any software that we use, so for webbing slings, rope, prusset cords, things like that, that needs to be rated at 24 km, which is 5,400 pounds. Looking at prusset cords, you want to be sure that they're rated at 24 km, 5,400 pounds or greater. Uh, taking a close look, we're kind of doing the same thing that we did when we were looking at the rope, and we're looking for nicks, abrasions, inconsistent diameters, discoloration, and in addition to all that, we're going to be looking at excessive glazing, which is caused by a lot of friction while descending on the rope. On this particular prusset cord, we have a sewn eye. There's a few different types you can have. You can have, this, you can have a spliced eye, but you can also tie a double fisherman's knot on, on a prusset cord. So when you're inspecting this, in this case, looking at the sewn eye, you want to make sure that you can see the, the threads. So if you have a cover over it, you have, to be, you have to be able to see the threads through there to make sure that they're not compromised. You want to make sure with a splice die that it's not being pulled out, anything like that. And with a dull fisherman knot, you want to make sure that that's set and not capsized or anything like that and to uh, ensure that it's still safe. Other than using a prusset cord, for your primary climbing system, you can use a mechanical climbing system. Now, there's a lot out there, but what I'll talk about quickly is the rope runner. Now, by no means do I recommend you run out and grab a rope runner right away, or any other mechanical device, but if you are using one to inspect it, you're looking for any nicks, inconsistencies, excessive wear, um, a lot of those things that we talked about with the carabiner um, that could affect your rope. You want to make sure that, the, especially with the rope running, you want to make sure that the spring is working properly. That's a key component in this case. And now, this is not a thorough inspection of the rope runner, but it's kind of an overview of what you would be looking for in a mechanical device. <clears throat> so, bringing this all together, we have the carabiner, pulley, prusset cord, rope, another carabiner, spliced eyes, you know, everything like that. We have a lanyard. It's a climbing lanyard that is a shell, and you shall have this on you at all times when you're aloft. This will, this will be clipped into your D-ring on your harness, and you do want to inspect this. This is one of those things that can be overlooked quite a bit because it's just sitting on your harness ready to go every time, but you do need to go through and inspect this prior to use every time. It's really important because those carabiners can get a lot of junk in them. You can accidentally nick your rope and not notice it. So you do want to go through and inspect that thoroughly. So you're going to go take all these components that we just talked about, all, the, all these inspections, and apply it to your lanyard. That's your rope, your carabiners, everything like that. Thank you.